Welcome to TechLix. This video is part of a series which charts our attempt to make a smart boy which takes measurements about the sea in just three weeks. In this episode, we're going to show you how we made wave and temperature measurements. But first, please bear with me as I rant about geography. <laughs> when we began planning this buoy, its main purpose was to be something which could create meaningful measurements about its environment. Coasts are dynamic and ever-changing locations, particularly in an era of anthropogenic climate change. One major challenge of managing coastlines is that we do not fully understand the mechanisms driving their change. We wanted to create a smart buoy which would be able to take in situ measurements at a high temporal frequency. Although similar products do exist, they're typically very expensive, making them inaccessible to average citizen scientist, researcher, or even a small government. The location for our project is Grenada, a small island developing state in the South Caribbean. We know that our project is at best a crew prototype. The algorithm we use to get wave properties from sensor measurements are very simple and definitely need some improvement. But what we want to do is demonstrate that it is possible to reasonably cheaply and reasonably easily create a piece of tech which can provide really valuable insight into the forces driving coastal change. Let's get started by using the main sensor aboard the Smart Boy. The GY86 contains the MPU6050 accelerometer gyroscope, the HMC5883L magnetometer, and the MS5611 barometer. The GY86 communicates via I2C. Take a look at the schematic in the description to find the hookup. Start by including the wire library required for the I2C on Arduino. Then include the I2C dev and MP6050 library required for using the GY86. Create an instance of the MPU6050 called MPU. Create variables to store accelerometer and gyroscope data in the three axes. In the setup, we set up our serial, then an I squared C connection, then we initialize the connection to the MPU and test if it worked. In the loop, we ask the MPU6050 for the accelerometer and gyroscope data, and we print the values. Then we pause for 10 milliseconds and repeat. We upload this code, and then check the serial monitor. Then we check the serial plotter and you can't see me smooth the circuit board but I promise you I am and you can see that I am on the plotter. The GY86 contains a magnetometer. It has a fancy name but all we're using it for is as a compass. You don't need to change any connections but let me just talk through the code to get the compass value. So we start by including the wire library because we're using I squared C. Then the I squared C dev, MPU6050, and the HMC5883 libraries. You may be wondering why we need the MPU6050 library. It's because to talk to the other sensors on GY86, we must go through the MPU6050. So we need to tell it that's what we're gonna do. So we create instances of the MPU6050, and then the HMC5883. Then we create variables to store the magnetometer data. Then we declare our magnetic declination, which is just the difference between magnetic north and true north, which is what we use for directions. And it depends on where you are in the world. You can find it on a website like this one. Then in the setup, we start by setting the serial output, setting up I squared C, 
and then we configure the MPU6050 to let us talk to the other sensors on the GY86. Then we initialise the MPU6050 and the HMC5883 modules and test their connection. In the loop section, we ask the magnetometer for the three values and then we print the results. In the print results section, we turn our magnetic field strengths into an angle for heading, which is the compass value, and we convert to degrees. Now open the serial monitor and see that your y-axis points with this heading and try checking it using your phone. We'll use the last sensor on the GY86, the MS5611 barometer. This is how you get the values. Include the wire library for I squared C, then the I squared C dev, MPU6050, and the MS5611 libraries. Create instances of the MPU6050 and the MS5611. Create the variables used to store the data from the barometer. Then in the setup, set the serial output, start the I squared C, set the MPU6050 to allow us to use other sensors on the GY86, initialize the MPU6050 and then initialize the barometer. In the loop, we get the temperature, then the pressure, and then use this to get the altitude and print the results. In the print results function, we change the temperature from, from Fahrenheit to Celsius because British people, upload the code, and now if we check the output, Yup, you can tell we're really overheating here. Now that we know how to use the sensor, let's try measuring wave properties, starting with wave height. The altitude of the buoy can be calculated using the air pressure value. We can use the relative altitude of the buoy over a time period to work out the wave height like this. Start by including the wire library for I squared C, then the I squared C dev, MPU6050 and the MS5611 libraries. We create instances of the MPU6050 and the MS5611. Then we create the variables to store the data. In the setup, we start the serial and the I2C connection. Then we tell the MPU6050 that we want to use other sensors on the GY86. Then we initialize the MPU6050 and the MS5611. In the loop, we declare a start time, get a reading for pressure, and use it to get altitude. Then we initially set the minimum and maximum height to this value for altitude. Then we find the minimum and maximum altitudes measured over five seconds, and then divide it by two to get the wave height. The next thing on the list is wave period. Airy wave theory is the most basic wave theory and says that surface waves can be described as sine waves. This is great because it makes the calculations much easier, but is of course a simplification. Using this theory, we should be able to get a value of wave period using the midpoint between our minimum and our maximum relative altitudes and finding how frequently the boy crosses these points. Start by including the wire library for I squared C, then the I squared C dev, MPU6050 and the MS5611 libraries. We create instances of the MPU6050 and the MS5611. Then we create the variables to store the data. In the setup, we start the serial and the I2C connection. Then we tell the MPU6050 that we want to use the other sensors on the GY86. Then we initialize MPU6050 and the MS5611. In the loop, we measure altitude for five seconds in order to find the midpoint of the waves and we define a smudge factor which is a value 15% of the wave's height. Then for another five seconds we test when the buoy crosses that midpoint 
within a range of plus or minus a smudge factor. And then if it goes out of this region, we say that it has escaped. Then if the altitude re returns back to the midpoint region, we set this as the end time. As this should be half a wavelength, we must double the time. We keep a moving average over these five seconds, and then we print it out. We also need to remember that the time we measured in was milliseconds, so divide by a thousand to get wave period in seconds. One definition of wave energy is defined by this friendly looking equation. Using our values for wave period and wave height, we're able to calculate wave energy. So this one is pretty similar to the previous two, except at the end, we use our values for wave height and wave period to determine wave power. Finally, we want to be able to measure water temperature. The DS18B20 water temperature sensor will protrude from the bottom of the buoy into the sea and the Arduino communicates with it using one wire. The only modification you need to make is by adding a pull-up resistor on the signal wire and then we can talk to it like this. Include the one wire and the Dallas temperature libraries for talking to the sensor. Then we say the sensor is on pin 6 and what communication it's using. Then we create a variable to store out water temperature in. In the setup, we start our serial output and the one wire connection. In the loop, we ask the sensor for the temperature, get it in degrees and print it out. Then open the serial monitor and see your results. Thanks for watching this tutorial. This has been the first step in building our smart boy. Watch our next tutorial to see how we send and store data and use the GPS. See you next time.